Champions Mojo is part of the CG Sports Network. Welcome to Champions Mojo, a podcast to bring out your inner champion. Your hosts are sisters-in-law, Kelly Palace and Maria Parker. Kelly is a former Division I head swim coach, Olympic trials qualifier, and holds national and world records in master swimming. Maria holds world records in endurance cycling and won the world's toughest bike race, Race Across America. Both are certified health and life coaches. Our goal is to inspire you through conversations with champions. And now your host, Kelly Palace. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo podcast. And as usual, I'm co-hosting with Maria Parker. Hello, Maria. Hi, Kelly. It's great to be here today. Yes. And we have a third person here with us today. And before we introduce our guest, Townley Haas, let's welcome him to the show. Welcome, Townley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Townley. We're so glad you're here. Yes. So, uh, Maria, I am so excited today to welcome Olympic gold medalist and American record holder, Townley Haas. Townley was part of the Rio Olympic gold medal winning 800 freestyle relay. He is also a seven-time medalist at two past world championships, racking up four golds, a silver, and two bronze medals. But Townley's done so much more, and especially recently. Maria, can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, first, during his NCAA career at Texas, he was a 10-time NCAA champion. He also won two gold medals in the 2018 Pan Pacific in the 800 free relay and the 200 freestyle. Most recently, in the exciting ISL Grand Finals, Townley took down Ryan Lochte's 10-year-old American record, which is one of the oldest American short course records. He went 140-49 in the 200 freestyle. So we're so excited to have this champion on our show. Welcome, Townley. Thank you. Yeah, so Townley, I, you know, this is funny because it's the third show in a row where Maria and I state that we are both Virginia girls. So (laughs) we're both born and raised in Virginia and I uh, have known of you because of being a Virginia girl and as a master swimmer, I swam for Mark Cutts, but I, this, as much as I've followed your career, like many people, can you just start off the top of the show and tell us where the name Townley comes from? Oh, it's, it's a great question. It's so unique. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Townley is a, it's a family name. Um, most of my, so my mom is one of uh, seven kids um, and, and a lot of us, we all, you know, uh, so my, sorry, my full name is Francis Townley Haas, which is a family name. Uh, my great uncle is Francis Townley Eck, uh, who I'm named after. The name Townley specifically is a really old English last name. Um, and they, this lady named Mary Townley came over from England and kind of like uh, eloped actually um, and, and moved to America. And so, you know, we've, we've kept a lot of names uh, in our family for, you know, for, as long as I could, I could find uh, at least. So yeah, so it's basically, long story short, it's just, it's just a really old family name. So your family has been in the U.S. for a long time. Yes. I mean, generations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. my middle in, name in is Virginia Francis. Specific. My middle name is Francis also, so yeah. I love that name. <laughs> and my, my youngest granddaughter's name is, is Francis. We call her Frankie. So. Yeah, so my, uh, my sister's, uh, my niece's middle name is Francis as well. Nice. So, yeah, nice they're, uh, we, we keep a lot of names in the family. <laughs> it's a good Catholic name, too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, and it, it also is one of my very favorite st- scenes in Stripes. Have you seen where Bill, Bill Murray is the head sergeant in Stripes, and there's a psycho in his war, war in his uh, unit, and he says... Um, don't call me Francis or I'll kill you. And it's just, it is absolutely one of the most funny things. That's so, awesome. And then, and then Bill Murray, so he says it like five times. You call me Francis, I'll kill you. You call me Francis, I'll kill you. And then Bill Murray says, lighten up, Francis. So I remember that. So my favorite thing to say to my husband, and this is just a standard code for just lighten up, is I say, lighten up, Francis. So it's just so awesome. funny. So tell me, great. All right. So we got to just start off the top of the show with the fact that you're coming off the ISL grand finals, as Maria said, and, and you've just broken this Ryan Lochte record. Tell us just how that feels and how this came about. Uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome. You know, it was, uh, it was something I had been looking at, uh, since, since when we got to the ISL, um, 
you know, just because uh, obviously short course meters is, is very new to me. Uh, it's very new to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, I just remember last year at the ISL, people would, you know, especially Caleb uh, would, you know, he'd, he'd go some time and people would be like, I think that's fast. You know, like, I'm not really <laughs> sure. Because it, it's, it's essentially for, for Americans, it's really just uh, short course worlds. Uh, it's like our only gauge of, of short course meters. So, yeah, it, I, I came in, you know, not really sure. And then, you know, I did my first Sooner Free was, you know, I think 41 high. Um, and I kind of realized that it, it might be like within my reach. Um, and, you know, like I was saying earlier, we were we were working pretty hard still at the beginning. And, uh, you know, as I got more rest, I got closer and closer. And then for the finals, you know, I, I was like, I, I need to get this record. You know, I, I want it really badly. Uh, and, you know, so I just <laughs> kind of went for it. Um, you know, I, I, looking back, I would have loved to have been under 40, but, uh, you know, the 200 free is, is such a tough event that, uh, you know, I, I came away extremely happy with that. And, uh, you what's know, tough, what's tough about the 200 free? Uh, all of it. Um, it's just, a it's, it's basically just a sprint, you know, um, you kind of have to just get out as fast as you can and, and hang on for with everything you have. Um, at least, that's the way I swim it at least. Um, and so it's just, you know, by that, by that fourth 50, you know, everything hurts. Uh, you know, you're, you're just trying to just not think about anything and just, just finish with whatever you have. But uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome to, to be able to break it. And, you know, just the fact that it's, it's Ryan's record and, you know, we're, we're, pretty good friends I would say uh you know so it was it was really cool a really cool experience all around so Ryan uh when Ryan Lochte was first like yeah I mean he's a huge name always but when he was like at the peak of his career how old were you oh man <laughs> um I mean what, what would you call the the peak um, well I'd say like eight or yeah even yeah I would say eight you know, like, so you're 12 years younger. Yeah. Well, you set yeah. that record right? in 2010, right? Yeah. So. so the record is obviously 10 years old. So, yeah, I mean, so the 2008 Olympics, I was 12. Um, and then, you know, the, I guess he probably, I think he brought that record at, at Short Course Worlds in 2010. So I, I probably would have actually just turned 14 uh, when, he, when he set that record. Um, Did you yes. think to yourself, I'm coming for ya? <laughs> No, not quite then. <laughs> Still a little, a little young to be uh, thinking about swimming where I am now. But you were having incredible success even at that age, were you not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, always, I like to think pretty fast. Um, you know, I think my, my real breakout swim was, was juniors. My, oh uh, man, the, the summer after my sophomore year of high school, I won the 400 at juniors. Uh, I did pretty well in the 200. I made, you know, made the made the junior team and all that stuff. Uh, I think that was when I I realized I could like swim in college and and you know probably do pretty well. Uh, so that, I think that was like the the summer of me figuring out that I was like definitely gonna swim in college and stuff like that. So you uh, a couple of things you've touched on that I know listeners are going ask him this ask him that so your your two hundred free you said is a painful but you your five hundred free is arguably your two your four hundred free and your five hundred free are arguably one of your best events so you swum those a lot and <sighs> wh like which is more painful and why that's a that's tough that's a tough question actually so. I think the recently, I think I would say that the, that 200 was more painful than the, the 400 the day before. Um, I think my 500 at NCAAs in 19 was probably the most painful thing I've ever done. Uh, that was purely my fault though. Cause I went out way too fast. Uh, I think I, I was out like 134 at the 200, which is just kind of dumb, Crazy. honestly, but, uh, <laughs> I think in, in general, I would say the 200 is harder. Um, Cause I mean, you know, there, you, it's almost an all out sprint the entire time. Um, and so it's to, to, to do that for, you know, a full minute and a half basically is, is pretty tough. The 500, you know, you can kind of not too much, but you can like, you don't have to go all out the entire time. You know? Yeah. So I, that, I would yeah. say in general, the 200 is in my opinion, more painful. Unless you swim it like you swam it at the 2019 NCAAs, yeah. which which I saw, 
and it was just definitely it was tough to watch yeah it was it was tough to do uh <laughs> tell us tell us the story of that that one so i you know i i wanted i had you know good 500s uh the, the, you know the years before and and you know i was always you know right right next to the record or right behind clark or you know something like that and uh i think actually that the the year the fall before uh john urbanchek came down and he just kind of hung out on deck for a couple of days and he gave us a practice one day and i just remember him him telling me to to you know like not be soft and go out fast and uh i i guess i i took it to heart and you know i was like i i remember thinking you know um what night would that have been wednesday night i was like you know i'm gonna go for it uh you know i'm gonna i'm gonna and then if it works i'm gonna tell john that it was it was all on him but uh yeah i just you know i i, I had that in my mind and i i wanted that record uh and you know the 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 way i'd been swimming the 200 was just go for it so i i figured you know might as well try it in the five uh and it it, it worked to an extent uh you know I, I mean i broke the record but it was you know, like I said, the most painful thing I've ever done, it was, you know, the, a rough, you know, middle 200 and stuff like that. But, um, but you still won the race and you hung on, but you were like, I, I just remember watching and as a fellow, you know, distance swimmer, you were out way ahead. And then that's when people start to reel you in a little bit and you see the field come back to you. And what, in your mind, what are you thinking? Like, how did you stay in it? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I did, I was out obviously pretty far ahead. And then I think at the, probably the 300, I started feeling it pretty hard. And, uh, you know, I could, I could see Sean catching me and, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of three, three to, to 400 was pretty rough. And then, you know, at, at the end of the race, you just kind of, it's kind of adrenaline at that point. You just, you just, you might, you know, your arms are numb and you, you don't, you're not really sure what you're doing, but you're just trying to do it as fast as you can. Uh, and so, yeah, it was just, just hanging on just at that point, just kind of not wanting to let the rest of the field catch you. Um, not really sure what you're going to go or what's going to happen, but you know, you're just giving it all you got. Yeah. I, I think that is such a, a, a trait of a champion where you're out there and you hang yourself out, you put yourself out there. We talked, we talked with Leah Smith and um, she said sometimes she'll, you know, she just goes out and holds on and she does some, you know, the 800 and the 1500 yeah. and all that. And she said, and sometimes she sees Jesus, which is <laughs> like just such a funny thing to say. So can I, can I ask a question? How do you have the courage to do that time and time again, you know, it's going to hurt like anything, you know, whatever it is, it's 200 to 400. How do you have the courage to dive in and just say, I'm going to put myself in this pain starting right at the beginning and trying to hang on as long as I can. Um, I think a lot of it just goes back to, to the training. Uh, you know, we obviously every, you know, I'm sure every team works pretty hard, but you know, we, we like to think we work the hardest and that, you know, I, I know I have, you know, those months of training before me to, to help me finish. And uh, I think another part of it is that, like, I, I'm never really, like, I always want to be faster, you know? Like, I, I went 129, and I was like, oh, well, I want to go 128 now. Uh, you know, I went 408, and I was like, well, I want to go 407. You know, I went 140, I want, I want to go 139. Uh, and just, just after, you know, freshman year where I kind of well, swam that 200 like I, like I do, uh, I realized that I could do it and that, you know, even if it hurts, I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to be able to do it. Um, so I think a lot of it is just recognizing what I've done in the months before it. And, uh, you know, just, just knowing that uh, all that training is going to, going to help me finish out. It's now time for the takeaways. Maria, you and I have heard the takeaways are the best part of the show. That's right, Kelly, because the takeaways are curated information, which is what we give to our clients when we coach them. If you would like to take your performance to the next level in health, life, or leadership, go to our website and schedule your free 30-minute consultation. Yes, just click on our coaching page and book there. We're looking forward to bringing out the champion in you. And now, the takeaways. Okay, so, well, Maria, we have, before we, uh, 
tell everyone how great we thought Townley was. We do want to tell you that uh, welcome to 2020. And we've had a gremlin in the technology today. We dropped off about uh, 20 minutes of his interview where he answered some really great questions. I think our yeah. favorite answer that he gave was um, that he got engaged and that's yeah. already out there in the news, but it was such a sweet story about how uh, he went out to a ranch and uh, ask his fiance to marry him. So that was a great story. We also didn't get to hear his speed round of fun answers that his fans would get to know him, but we're just going to give you the takeaways from the entire show that we got. And two of them, we noticed, came in that first 13 minutes. And we feel like he really answered some really powerful questions in the first 13 minutes. So um, we're almost at 100 episodes. We've never had this happen. So, hey, we've got a good batting average going. But uh, we, did, we did not get all of this interview. But, hey, we got some great answers. So, sure Maria, did. your first takeaway yeah, I, 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 that this made it to the part that we did record and, and it's just his willingness to go all out. You know, I asked him about having the courage, you know, he, to him, it's, you know, I don't think it's necessarily courage. He just, he, he created a new way to, as I understand it, to swim the 200, but just going out like it was a 50. <laughs> so, or a hundred. So he, he goes all out, he puts it out there and then he tries to hang on. I think that is amazing. I respect it. He's not afraid to fail. And that this is a great takeaway for me because, you know, I don't want everyone to be humiliated. So sometimes I hold back, but, you know, cause I don't want to have the monkey or the piano as you put it on, on my back. So I, I think that's a great takeaway. Just go for it. Go all out. Yes. Don't be afraid to fail. Yes. And his quote out of that, which may be the quote of the, of this episode. So you may hear it again from Brant, but he said it was the most painful thing he's ever done. That's right. So <laughs> that's, that's quite a quote. Um, yeah. And, and that ties into my first overarching theme, which people did get to hear in that first uh, portion with him. And that is that you have to trust your training and you trust your coach. So when right. you go out like a, a, a maniac and, and hit that, um, you know, okay, you know, I might be able to hold on. So I love the trust there and how important it is to A, have a coach and B, to trust your coach. Yeah. So that yeah. was my, my number one. How about your second one? I, I love that because, uh, uh, you know, it takes humility to trust your coach. Yes, yes, uh, yes. He, you know, he talked about that uh, a little bit too, you know, that what makes a champion is, is, is humility. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I want to think that I can be, um, all things and I can't, I can't without help. And so I, I get coaching from you and others. And um, I think that's a really good takeaway. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so my second takeaway, which didn't make it in the recorded part, but he said, and we've heard this before, so it's a little bit of a review, but it's, you know, when you have a, an, an effort or training after it's over, you take three minutes and you evaluate it and then you close that door and you don't obsess about it and you don't worry about it. And you don't lose sleep on it. You then you just move on. And I loved that, um, th you know, that aspect of Townley as a champion, he's able to say, okay, here's what I did. It went well, or it didn't go well. I'm, you know, next time I'll do differently, or I'll, I'll do the same. Um, I think I can tend to obsess on things and worry about things and carry on about things in my mind. And so I think that the, the attribute that he has developed and has of just being able to say no is great and is a great um, takeaway. Yes, yes. Move on. Go right. Move on. Grieve or, or grieve know, or celebrate, but then and, move on. Yeah. Move on. Move on. Whatever it is. Yes. So, and my uh, second takeaway, which again did not make it into the the portion that we've just heard, but it was one of the things that um, he says that he does as his part of his uh, rituals and routines to make him a champion, and that is he he balances rest with all mm. this hard work, rest mm. and relaxation. He really. Uh, takes the time to rest and relax and unplug from being so focused on swimming. And he, he does admit, hey, swimming is my world. This is what I do. But I, I do. I play video games or I watch movies or I just really unplug. So I think that uh, unplug from swimming. So relaxing and resting. We actually did a whole show on it once, how important it is because that's when we grow. When we exercise a muscle, it doesn't really develop and grow until we take that day off between training. Right. That's when repair happens. And it's true for mental things too. And we were 
Um, you know, I've, I've been really working on that because I sometimes feel like if I can just work a little bit harder and do a little bit more, I could be better, but that doesn't work that way. If you take time down, downtime, you actually get better, you get ideas. Um, so yeah, you need relaxation is so important and it's, it's for me a never ending battle. <laughs> Sounds funny, yes. but I, I want, I need, I need to relax more. Right, I think on. we all do. And, uh, you know, this, uh, we apologize to you listeners that you didn't get the whole Townley Haas interview, but, but we you got, some you got our stuff. takeaways. Yeah. And, and I think he answered some really powerful questions at the beginning. This was recorded on December 14th, 9, uh, 2020, the day Google <laughs> went down. So, um, we uh, really appreciate your patience with that. So anyway, Maria, I love you. Thanks love for being too, on this Kelly. journey with me. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast with host Kelly Palace and Maria Parker. Champions Mojo is produced by Cobra Media and a new episode debuts every Tuesday. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Follow Champions Mojo on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Champions Mojo.